Welcome to She's Crafted to Thrive, a show for women in photography and other creative businesses. You will hear conversations about the real everyday struggles of juggling life and business while trying to maintain passion and balance. As women, we have the skill of getting things done, but sometimes we get in our own way. It's here where you'll see that you're not alone. You'll discover that success does not mean perfection. Fear, negative thoughts, and challenges are all part of the journey. On the podcast, you'll find the inspiration and tools you need to have a life and business that thrives. Hey guys, I'm so excited to be doing this solo cast. It's just me this time. I plan on doing a few more of these, um, maybe once every other month. Um, I really think it's a great place for me to share a little piece of me and my stories and um, kind of my experiences um, as a entrepreneur and as a woman dealing with endometriosis. So I'm really excited to um, do this solo cast and I hope you guys like what I'm talking about today. And today I'm talking about relationships. I'm talking about um, connecting authentically online. And this is a topic that I think a lot of us have a hard time doing. A lot of us um, find it difficult to be real online. And I find it hard myself. It's really hard because there's a lot of people out there who are doing, um, it seems to be perfect, right? It seems like everyone's peachy and wonderful and their images are amazing and their captions are picture perfect and um (laughs) there are so many things that are pretty cool that people are doing and I'm not hating I'm just saying it's kind of like one of those high competitive areas if you know what I'm talking about but what I have found over my course of the years is that it is really difficult um to be real and authentic online y'all I'm in my closet (laughs) <laughs> recording this and my little Leo kitty is in here trying to get his little love fest on and I'm like I'm working this is not the time Bubba okay I'm back so what I want to talk to you guys about is that very important topic of creating authentic relationships online and why is this so important to me and why um, I think it should be important to everyone in their business, especially if they're online, but not just business, like in life as well, is that we have become so digitally, I don't know what the word is, we have become so consumed with what's happening online and technology is amazing and we have so many things because of it. And it has helped humans become closer in many ways, but in a lot of ways, it has disconnected us. It has made us so unhuman. Instead of picking up the phone or writing a letter, we send a picture, or we not even send a picture, we post it on Facebook or Instagram. We um, see someone post and we like, or um, we do a little emoji or something. We have taken out of the human factor in a way from the connection, like the connecting to people on a human level. You know, when you used to get your pictures as a kid, you would send it to your friends or your family. They would call you up and say, oh my gosh, I loved um, the pictures. You guys look amazing, da, 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 da. And now, instead of all that, we get all that done online. But it's not the same as that phone call, right? Like, I know I'm not the only one that feels this way. Like, the talking to someone... Or what about when you get a handwritten note from someone that you've worked with or friend or family? You just feel so much more special. Guys, that doesn't that doesn't make any sense, right? It doesn't make any sense why we feel so much more special. But it does make sense because those are the ways that we really do connect with one another. So how do you do that online? How do you do that in general in your life and your business? So I want to tell you a story, and um, the reason why I'm so passionate about this is because I truly believe it. I've had so many opportunities in my life um, when it comes to my business because of just connecting to people on a human factor with no alternative motives, nothing out of out of nothing. Like, I don't want anything out of it other than to satisfy my curiosity and to see how I can be of assistance to someone. So I'm going to tell you a story. And this story starts with me back in Atlanta. 
um, in downtown Duluth, where I love. It's a little town. It, look, um, it looks so different now <laughs> in 2018 than it did, oh my gosh, uh, six years ago. Um, it's a new little town. But what I love about little towns is just there's always small business owners. And usually in those small cities, little small downtown areas, those are mom and pop shops. They're not... Um, they're not corporate, you know, they're not, um, what do you call them, you guys? My brain is just in a fog right now. They're not, um, chains. They're small business owners who, who probably started out of the, out of their closet, out of, um, their kitchen, or they had an idea and they wanted to make it come true. And that's what they're doing in those little downtown areas. And I love that. And that scene is changing a little bit too, but that's where my story begins with this one. So my husband and I is walking downtown in this little cute little little downtown area and there's a water fountain and there's always like these new pop, you know, new businesses that were opening up there. There's a coffee shop down there that I really liked. They had the best chai tea and it's the powdered chai tea. And um, I just loved going down there and I was walking with my husband and I noticed that there's this little place called the work spot and... Guys, I was like, that's cool. What is the work spot? And at the time, I was um, working for myself. And I was kind of in between jobs because I was dealing with a lot of health stuff. And I was just trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I was like, hmm, but the place wasn't open at the time. So mind you, I just, you know, thought about it. And I kept seeing it. And I loved the logo on the outside of it. And I saw them, you know, putting things up over time. And I would go downtown Duluth every like like once a week just because I would sit out in the park and you know it's just a really quaint sweet place to go. So one day I was there by myself and I just walked in cuz she was the the owner was there and she was open. And I was like, "Hey, what is this?" And she's like, "Oh, this is a co-working space." And I was like, "A co-working space? What is that?" At the time I had heard of them, but I wasn't really too, too familiar with the idea of what co-working spaces were. And she's like, oh, it's a community um, about entrepreneurs who are starting and creating their own businesses. Um, we have, you know, plans on working with the community and really sharing um, our, our skills with one another. And this place is kind of my place. I actually work and the, the owner's like, I actually work for a company out of Arizona, but I wanted to do this as a side hustle thing because it's something I've always wanted to do. And I was really excited about it. So I did the little tour and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It was something that I just thought was so cool. And I was like, this is awesome. I love it. Um, at the time I was playing with the idea of working with creative entrepreneurs and doing like little events and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I'd love to host an event here. Now, I had no idea that this woman loved like creative things, but she was so excited about that. And she was like, oh my gosh, I would love to do that. Please, let's talk about details. Come, come, come. And so that was the beginning of the relationship of me and co-working spaces with this wonderful place and this owner. And guys, that was just walking by a store and being curious and wondering what this place is about. And I really created a friendship, a business friendship with this woman. And she really supported me in my business. She really helped me um, grow um, to understand the industry as far as entrepreneurs, um, as well as co-working. But also it gave me a place to go to kind of play around with ideas. Now, that story ended up with me working my business. I started my first whole business business called um, One of a Kind Finds, local One of a Kind Finds, or I called it One Oak. And it was basically where I did events for creators um, and makers. And we did that. And then we did coaching where we talked about how to use social media and how to network with people and how to blog and all that kind of stuff. And she was amazing. And I did that, and she felt so comfortable with the way that I was doing that. I was building that business and just connecting with people. She asked me to come on for her and to do some networking. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I would love to do that. Um, so I started networking for her. I started going to networking events and meeting people and um, connecting people with each other and connecting them to the space. 
And it just was so natural to me. I never went to school for this. I never really had to think about it. I just kind of had it in my bones, I think. Um, it was a skill or a gift, I believe, that God gave me to really connect with people and um, try to put them in the right place and, you know, help them with their ideas and help them help them to succeed and have no, like, I don't even think about the money side of it. It happens to bring about money that's amazing. But I think that's what people really feel for me. And I still get that today. People today still feel so comfortable um, with me when it comes to their business and things because they know that I'm just there to help them. Now let's, that was about six years ago. Let's fast forward to a year ago. I moved to Florida, a place that I know no one, guys. I know nobody. And um, <laughs> we know nobody. Like we were, we knew nobody because in the sense that, you know, we went to our congregation that's here and there were a few people that we got to know, but it's not close. Like Atlanta was home. You know, Atlanta, I would go anywhere and people, my husband would be like, girl, you and everybody knows you. This is not that place. Florida was not that. And my husband was working. And because of that experience of at that co-working space, I just love co-working spaces. I just go in them all the time just to be like, hey, what's up? This is cool. How you doing? Like I have usually have no plans on joining them right now because I work from home solely because of my health issues, but I just love them. So if I have the opportunity and I'm out and about, I just go and stop by. So for a couple of months, my husband um, was working and I was looking, like going past there and I kept seeing this place. It was like a co-working space on Central and St. Pete. And I was like, kept walking by, walking by. And I was like, I'm just going to go in there. I'm just going to be like, what's up? How are you guys doing? They had just opened. Uh, matter of fact, when I walked in, they had literally just um, opened their doors and they were having their grand opening like the next day. And I met one of the owners and she toured me and I was just like talking with her. They're actually an attorney's office um, who decided to grow into this co-working community because they worked with so many business owners. They thought that this will be a great um resource for communities um for it would be a great resource for um entrepreneurs and small businesses and they would be able to give free legal advice um from time and time to these business owners and also they just love that world of entrepreneur space um so that was their story and their place is amazing if you're ever in florida in this tampa bay area you need to visit rising tide innovation center it's a really cool um, co-working space. It's owned by two women, two attorneys. Um, they are pretty awesome. And their community manager is fabulous. But anyway, um, that was a year ago. And I was just like, yeah, you know, occasionally I would go by and just walk in and be like, hey, you know, it was really cool to meet you. And this place is cool. Are you guys looking for anybody specifically as, you know, as members? And they're like, tell me we're looking for tech people. I'm like, oh, my husband's in tech, you know, I'll let him know. Maybe he can tell his people. So I made me visit the place twice a year ago. Out of the blue, this woman calls me from the, the, um, from the attorney's office at the co-working space. And she's like, I know you mentioned, and I, guys, I didn't remember I mentioned this. She's like, I know you mentioned that you used to work with a co-working space. We're looking for someone to help train our assistant, who's our legal assistant, to become a community manager. Do you think you would be interested? What? <laughs> Wait a minute. What are you talking about? And she's like, yeah, I think it would be a good space. I think you could really help. Maybe we can meet. So we met. Long story short, they're a client of mine now, and I work with um, the community manager in helping her figure out how to do that, how how to really connect with her community and how to network with the community outside of Rising Tide. So guys, it all started with a conversation and a curiosity. And I think that's what's missing a lot of the times in our businesses um, and online. We, we tend to shy away from those real authentic connections because it's hard to do that when there's so many different connections happening online, right? So how do you do that? How do you really connect with someone in a way that it doesn't feel sleazy and yucky, but it builds a relationship that it doesn't matter whether they become a client or not. It just matters that they are people and you connected and maybe you can help them. 
And that's really my approach to my social media, um, my marketing online, offline, is, is there a way I can help you? And I think that is a real authentic, authentic piece that is missing from our businesses. And I don't think it's intentional, obviously. I think we all mean to be real. I think we all mean to be honest and open, but it's really hard to do that, especially if we're critical of ourselves or we're, we feel inferior to the people that are on there doing amazing things. But you're doing something amazing. You're amazing. Um, what you have is special to you. What, how you do what you do is special to you. And I think that's a piece that we all forget about, that there are always going, there is always going to be competition in whatever we do. But your story cannot be duplicated. Your circumstances cannot be duplicated. And that's the piece of us that we need to share. That's the piece of us that we need to connect with. But one of the ways that we have to do that is that we have to be clear. We have to be real. We have to know who is our ideal customer. We need to know what our story is and how it relates to the ideal customer. We need to have an idea, a feeling from the heart that we want to give regardless of what we get. You know, we want to give regardless of what we get. That's so important. I think when we go out expecting to get the world and we don't, it sets up, it sets up ourselves for failure. It sets us up to just be sad and depressed. Um, if you just go out there and have joy with what you're doing, it makes all the difference. It won't matter if someone will say yes to you or connect with you or even care what you're doing. What will matter is that you have joy and then what will happen will be that other people will connect to you because of that. And whether they connect with you on a financial way or a relationship way, you will have gained because you will have done it out of out of your heart, right? So that's what my course that I'm working on right now is how to create real meaningful relationships beyond online, online, offline. And so that it doesn't feel like it matters whether or not you get the client or not. What happens to you guys is that I'm learning this um, as I work through some personal development with, with a company I'm with now on the side of my business is that the results only can appear skewed in the beginning. They usually do. It takes a long time for relationships to build. And doesn't that make sense? In person, it takes a while for relationships to be built. Think about it online. We're asking people to connect with a stranger. We're asking people to buy or work with us or um, entertain a conversation with us. And they never met us in person. Never. And we're hoping that they will buy the world from us, right? Or if they're connected to us and we haven't talked to them in years, we're expecting them to trust us enough to purchase something from us or to refer us to a friend. How is that going to happen unless you build it over time? And I think that's a piece, a human piece that we forget. We all, you know, the numbers are important, but the people are the numbers, right? And so what you want to do is create something that People come back to you years later, whether or not they say yes or no, they come back and they want to work with you or they want to refer someone with you or they're curious to find out more about you and your life. But that works both ways. And then that's a piece that I really want people to focus on is the other way, the us way. Are we are we being the people who are consistently reaching out? Are we giving what we can give? Are we being real with what we're giving? You know, a saying in, 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 in my team is, you have to go slow to go fast. I love that, right? Isn't that so true? Um, you have to go slow to go fast. Relationships just don't, you know, crash and go. But real relationships take time. There's a reason why when you get married or you're in a relationship for, you know, a long time, your feelings that you had in the beginning can go through a metamorphosis of being extremely amazing and more more in love with a person than you were in the beginning. And it's not because you didn't love them in the beginning. It's just because you didn't know them as well as you know them now. And that's what it is online. People will start to like and know you and trust you 
when you continue to show up and give them value beyond belief, when you continue to show up and give them your heart, when you continue to show up and care for them, whether or not they say yes or no to you. And that's a piece, that's a human piece that no social media, no Facebook, no Instagram, no website will do except you. You have to reach beyond online. You have to create that real place. And so that's part of the reason why when I connect with people, I ask them for their name, their phone number, and their address if they're willing to give it to me because I like to send thank you cards. I like to call people and be like, hey, what's up? How are you doing? How's your life? Um, If they're comfortable with online doing that in Messenger or email, I do that that way as well. And those are the people that I always stay in contact with. And those opportunities come my way and I'm not even seeking them out. Business and work comes my way because of that. And I really truly believe that's because I care and they feel that I care. Not that you don't care. Not that you don't feel. I just think sometimes we get so stuck and the, oh, I got to get this post out. Oh, I got to da, 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 da. Life doesn't work that way. You know, our relationships don't work that way. Sometimes I want to talk to you. Sometimes I don't, right? Sometimes you have a best friend today. You don't have a best friend tomorrow because you guys had an argument and now you guys are best friends again. Life is messy. Life is real. But if you are real and you aren't fake and you do show up, when you show up and you give what you can, it makes all the difference in the world to people. It makes you real to them. It helps your relationships to really matter no matter what. And that's a piece of a piece of joy that I love about my business. A piece of joy. I really like knowing what's going on with people in their lives and I really like connecting in that way. And it's a piece that I really miss a lot. And in business, it's very rare that you find someone that's not just looking at you as a number, but looking at you as a person. So that's why I decided to take a month off in October to really work on the content-ish, like the content stuff of my webinar that I'm going to be doing about how to make real authentic relationships online and offline. It's going to be a step-to-step um, guide about basically how to do it um, online using the the resources we have online and then how to translate that offline. And um, I hope it's something that everyone will find valuable. It won't be as all over the place as this. It's very laid out. And it's going to be really detailed about how to make those relationships and those things that happen online become more than just engagement numbers to you. Um, but make them count for multiple of reasons. So I can't wait to share that with you guys. And I can't wait for my next solo cast because I'm sure that one will be interesting. I don't know what the topic is. I just thought I would do one for this month. I have another interview coming up soon, hopefully. Um, And it'll be on a more personal level. It's going to be about women dealing with chronic illness. And I can't wait to hear what you think about that one, too. So you guys have a great day. Thank you. All right, ladies, thank you for listening. And I hope this conversation inspired you. Be sure to subscribe and tell a friend. That's it on this episode. And yes, you are crafted to thrive.